Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. I am Gabrielle Handel, a draftsman and the host of the show, A Conversation About Art, where I'm doing long-term research on the meaning of art and beauty. If you'd like to support my channel, liking, leaving a comment, and sharing this video is incredibly helpful and so is subscribing. Other support links are in the caption, show notes, or description, whatever you call it. Today we have episode 98, and my guest is artist Joseph LaRusso. Joseph, welcome. Please tell our listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Hi, Gabriella. Hey, thanks for having me, first of all. And um, I'm a uh, painter. I mostly paint figurative work. Um, I'm generally known for, I guess if I were to categorize anything, it'd be more of kind of genre work. I, I like to paint scenes of, of people interacting somehow and that's basically kind of what i've been known for um you never want to be pigeonholed obviously into anything as, as i'm sure you'd understand mm -hmm. but uh for the most part yes if if somebody were to mention my work and i think a certain imagery would kind of come to mind it would be it would be that so uh, and i i enjoy it and that's kind of uh, what i've been doing for the last uh, 30 years or so oh okay um would you go a bit more into ex uh, elaborating on what scene work is, please? Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, you know, eventually, as you discussed before the taping, we'll, we'll get into a bit more of what art is and so forth. And mm -hmm. so just as a, as a kind of a, uh, uh, not a segue into that, but a uh, just kind of laying in some foundation on that is my work generally illustrate. So here's, here's a quick, uh, just to step back a second. I, I was educated, I went to school, and I'm from Chicago, and I went to school at the American Academy of Art in Chicago. And um, at the time, very traditionally studio-based school and heavy emphasis on, I mean, all, all realism, heavy emphasis on the figure and so forth, and heavy emphasis on, on uh, training people that wanted to make a living in art. You know, back in the day, we used to call it commercial art, I wanted to be a commercial artist. And, and one of those things was um, illustration. And so I wanted to be a great illustrator. And my influences at the time for illustration were, um, you know, you, you, you just can figure out uh, Rockwell and Dean Cornwell mm. and some of these great uh, golden age of illustrator kind of people. And, and the reason I was drawn to them is because they, um, like no one else, were able to tell a story and they were very good at, at uh, creating narrative work. Um, you and I both, I'm sure, can think of dozens and dozens of great artists who are who have technical facility and, and can paint and draw and, and and so forth very well technically but maybe uh, the ability i think to express a narrative i think is a, is a different um, a different uh, discipline i think that mm. not everybody can can do well and so that's what i was drawn to is being able to tell a story i'm not the best draftsman i'm not the best you know colorist perhaps or whatever but i really enjoy being able to tell a story. So my, my work generally tries to tell a story in some way, kind of combining illustration and, and fine art, I think. I don't distinguish between the two. Mm. Um, and to me, it's just good painting is good painting. Right. Um, but uh, that's kind of the impetus of my work is to try and connect by telling some sort of a story that everybody can really relate to. You know, my work generally tends to be scenes of people in interaction of some kind, mostly usually romantic scenes or emotional scenes of some kind. And the reason I gravitate towards that is because we're human and, and we are emotional beings. And I think we generally will immediately gravitate and connect with work that we can readily relate to. So I, that's kind of a long winded answer, but I, hopefully that, that answers that. Yeah, no, no, that's, uh, we, we uh, welcome long uh, what is typically called long-windedness here, so it's fine, no problem. Uh, thank you for elaborating on that. Um, it's definitely helpful. So I have a question about uh, narrative work. Well, I have a lot of questions, but uh, we'll see how many we can fit in in this part of the conversation. Um, so... I'm curious about the use of the term narrative when it comes to, you know, spe specifically narrative work, because um, I guess I wonder what specifically that, uh, what specifically makes a work of art an image, 
narrative because I kind of think, you know, because humans, because we are kind of pattern-seeking machines in a way, uh, any, not even necessarily realistic, but quasi-realistic, a color or, uh, you know, the drawing of a, a pen, uh, the drawing of a ring or whatever, or at least it does happen to me that when I look at an image or a color or whatever it is, it immediately kind of starts like the cogs start, start kind of working to kind of see what is the reason for that being there and sometimes it'll be kind of like a little story like a narrative on its own like oh the ring it's like oh somebody it could be somebody is an engagement or so like a family heirloom or something some of this sort versus it's so then what it so i kind of i kind of think that any image is by default narrative so then what what do you think you know what do you what do you think sure. about that sure sure so uh, what is my definition of narrative so I, to your point, I, I agree. I think in a subjective sense, we as artists can pretty much, you know, it's wide open, right? Anything mm. can apply to just about anything. But at some point, if you want to start to add definition, then I think things begin to get a bit more um, narrow. For me, um, I agree with you. Yes, anything, a color, anything can spark an emotion, right? Um, whether it's, for me, do I take that into then a narrative? I don't know that I would do that necessarily for me. And again, uh, let me preface, every time I give an interview, I always try to preface everything by saying, whatever I say is only pertaining to me and my sure. approach. It's never, I never speak gospel. I never say I'm right, you're wrong, any of that. It's just the way I approach things. And yes. what, how, in my experience, right? Yes. So for me, the, the, the definition of a narrative is something, to distinguish between what you just said, you can say, you can look at a painting according to what you're, you've said and say, boy, that color makes me feel sad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, where I paint a painting of a couple that is just of a woman crying, right? So that makes somebody feel sad. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm more literate, I guess is what I'm saying as far as the narrative. I'm not being as as ethereal, as ambiguous, and as open-ended as, as far as what can what defines a narrative. For me, it's a bit more uh, literal. I'll paint mm -hmm. a scene of a couple embracing or, or kissing or a, a woman in repose or contemplative or what have you. And to me, that's where the story begins. You know, as artists, you know, we can get into this a little bit, little bit later, but as artists, we really are, we really are, are just, triggers in a lot of way because mm -hmm. what what we create is something that just allows the viewer to begin a journey to begin to delve into something mm -hmm. at least i in my approach it should yes i never try to paint something that defines everything from start to finish because then what's the point of having a viewer mm -hmm. right um what's the point of for me ultimately it's all about connection and and my scenes are literal um, narratives or literal stories or beginnings of stories or little triggers of stories that people can then uh, expand upon. Or what most often happens, people will then look at a scene and then they bring their own experience to it. Mm -hmm. And you know, while you can do that by looking at just a color, it's a lot easier or more um, you could more readily do that by looking at, you know, a scene with more information, perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, does that make any sense? Yes. So, so my work is, is, you know, it's, it's a bit more illustrative and a bit uh, more of a story, beginning of a story or a lead in to a story of some kind, a, giving a lot of leeway to the viewer then to um, bring their own experience and interpretation to that. Okay. Without the viewer, my work is is useless, frankly, to me. Without the viewer there to say, "Hey, I love this piece. Is this couple? Is this that cafe?" And my my husband and I went to this cafe. I know where this is exactly. We went there on our honeymoon, and it's so it just evokes so much emotion, and re reminds us of the time we spent there, et cetera, et cetera. And frankly, I may say, "Nope." In my head, I might be thinking, "Nope, it's not that cafe at all." But yeah. if it works for you, that's great, right? So that's what it's about. It's about what the viewer brings to it yes yes okay yeah that you know that reminds me a little bit of the 
uh, the thing about if the tree, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one else, no one there yeah. to hear it, it reminds me a little <laughs> of, a, a little bit of that. And I mean, I I agree with you in the sense of kind of like the relationship of the work of art with the viewer. Yeah. Um, you know, we I don't know if you do, but uh, often we will say like, yeah, I, I make the drawings for me or whatever. Um, I don't strictly agree with that because I mean, I do consider myself kind of like their first owner, but I do want them to go to someone else. You know, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. I, I, I like that a lot about the point of the work being to find that relationship with the viewer, somebody that is not the artist who made the thing. You know, yeah. Um, and also this, this, um, your explication on narrative work, I think, I think also kind of helps to explain, or, or I think, or it reminds me at least of things that I've heard in previous episodes about, because when somebody refers to themselves as an illustrator and not an artist. Um, cause you know, I mean, you, you specifically said that you don't differentiate between fine art and, and illustration. Um, I do not. but okay. So then why don't, why don't you? Well, this is going to be a very controversial answer or, or maybe not. Frank, I don't think it's, controversial. I like controversial things. It's fine. Some people, well, <laughs> I don't think it's contra to me. It makes obvious sense, but yeah. somebody may think it's controversial, but to me, you take somebody like a Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo, who arguably are some of the greatest masters of all time. And take, for example, I like to use the example of the Sistine Chapel. What, what is that? It's just a big illustration. That's okay. all it is, mm -hmm. right? I mean, how would you define it? It's probably one of the greatest pieces of fine art ever created, but for lack of a better term, it's just a big illustration. Yeah, yeah. You know, he had a commission by the, by the church and the Pope, and they said, we want you to paint something with these types of things and so forth, up, and it's got to go up there on that ceiling. And he just illustrated all those scenes is what he did. So how do you distinguish, you know, people like to make the distinct, distinction, they say, well, it's for, it's for hire and, you know, you're hired by an art director to paint this specific thing for money, et cetera, et cetera. Well, isn't that what the Sistine Chapel was a lot of yeah, ways? Yeah. That, isn't that what a lot of the sculptures Michelangelo did? They were, you know, commissioned for money for the church, et cetera. So, you know, again, I'm sure we can, you know, parse out, purists will argue with me until they're blue in the face about, <laughs> well, no, no, this and that and everything. But to me, to your point, you know, there, I, that's why I make no distinction. Because to me, if it's if it's well painted, it doesn't matter. It's just it's a great painting. You know, take away the the reason it was painted, hang it on the wall. In the final analysis, what is hanging on the wall is what matters. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, I like that a lot. Um, yeah, and I'm also inclined to agree with you in that there is no distinction necessarily of uh, between fine art and illustration. Um, just because both of them are about making an image. If anything, I, if anything, I mean, now that we're discussing, uh, you know, now that you've uh, elaborated on um, what uh, narrative image is, if anything, th maybe, maybe the category of, of illustration could be of slightly more narrative images, meaning that they're just more explicit, a little bit more explicit sure. about what they're talking about in the imagery. Sure. But sure. yeah, but but um, but that doesn't um, kind of I don't. I, I mean, don't... The, uh, take, take Leonardo's Last Supper. Isn't that yeah. an illustration? Yeah, yeah. Isn't for that sure. a narrative work? It's a narrative work, right? So yeah, yeah. I mean, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, I I would say that his the drawings that I've seen of his for like the anatomy stuff, those are illustrations. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, for example, okay, and all right, so. Why do you think that you're drawn to making scenes of people having these interactions, and why do you, and why do you think that you're specifically drawn to the romantic ones? Yeah, um, boy, I like the you know this, the pat answer I give is that I'm I think in deep down inside I'm just kind of a, a, a hopeless romantic inside. Mm -hmm. But the, but here's here's the the technical answer is is this. I have friends, just like I'm sure you do, who are great. Um, they can draw, they can paint still life, or they can paint wildlife, or they can do landscape. And they're amazing at it. But unless you're, um, you know, a panther or a tree mm -hmm. or a bowl of fruit, mm -hmm. it's hard for you to relate one to one to that subject. You can appreciate it, you can admire it as a person, right? Oh my God, look at the technical facility. Look at what it took to, to paint that bowl of fruit. But you are more readily going, I keep using that word, but 
for lack of a term, you are more readily and more instinctively and um, um, the immediacy for you to connect to a painting with another human being in it is immediate. Does that make sense? Yes. And so that is the great connection that figurative painters have is that we can readily connect with other people because we're painting us. Mm -hmm. I'm painting mm -hmm. you. I'm painting me. In many ways, these are our archetypes. You know, the, yeah, the people yeah. in the, the paintings are just symbols of you and I and, and what we go through in our daily life. And I, I don't know about you, but I've been in love and I love being in love and I love and I've, I've fallen out of love and I've had all kinds of emotions of throughout my life of many things. And so is everybody else. And so right. these are the things that we can readily connect with and um, uh, we, we immediately understand. I'll never understand how an eagle feels when it's flying through the sky, right. or I'll never understand how a tr what a tree is feeling. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So that's my technical answer, is that because I paint paintings of people, I immediately can connect to other people. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the, 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 when you dig down through all the layers, that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so- It's about connection. All art is about connection, Gabriella. I don't know if that's something that we'll discuss, but to me, all art, all art, painting, music, dance, uh, literature, anything that we create from our emotional center, it's all about connecting to humanity. That's what it comes down to. Uh, not to expand on that or, or bore you to death, but- No, please go ahead. Um, um, but uh, to me, you take some of the, the earliest um, cave paintings, you know, you look at the Lascaux paintings in, in France and so forth, Again, those are just illustrations, and they were made as you know to connect and, and with with the other people in the tribe. And this is this is the hunt, and here's the bison, and here's the us shooting the arrows, and et cetera, et cetera. So again, I keep using it, it's for me. It's so easy to make those those uh, connections. Pardon the pun to um, you know what we do as narrative work and, and illustration and so forth. It's ultimately it's all about connecting to, to all of us to, together okay okay but then so so then so then you said that's the technical reason what was the other what was the other well for reason? me I, I really just enjoy painting these scenes because you know they speak to me I, I like to in, in many ways and again maybe this is kind of a um, an artistic answer or me being a, not a cop-out but in many ways see we're very fortunate people like you and I and other artists, because we see the world through a different lens and we see the world through what the lay person, quote unquote, doesn't have the privilege of seeing. Mm. Some people could call it a curse. Sometimes it can, you know, Michelangelo called it a curse. Sometimes mm. um, it's not the best way to approach the world, but I find it as a blessing because we see, I view the world through a different lens that not everybody can see at least not to sound full of myself or whatever but just i know when i walk down the street i'm looking at things differently than than my wife who is a mathematician you know mm -hmm. i mean but um but for me i create these scenes for many reasons a because maybe there are scenes that i've experienced i just my wife and i went to italy this summer we experienced many wonderful romantic scenes and i you know, you're logging those mentally. You're logging those, and not just mentally. I'm making notes. And so, mm -hmm. scene of a uh, you know couple that 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 does that that. Oh, I remember that. Oh, look at that. Look at those people in the in the corner there. They're, I make a mental note of that. That's a great emotion. That's a great a, a starter right, for an idea, right? Um, but then I also, you know, you paint scenes because you are a voyeur. You are an escapist. You want to paint. Getting back around to us being artists, being fortunate. Um, to see the world we do because, and I've said this before, if we don't like the world that we live in, we are in many ways fortunate that we can create the world mm -hmm. we want to live in, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's internal, obviously, or in our head or in our heart or whatever, um, I can escape into this painting I'm creating. How many people have that um, ability to do that to in, in essence create their own world right now people say well that sounds a little kooky but, but it doesn't I, when i say this to another artist they kind of yeah yeah i get yeah i see what you're saying i totally mm -hmm. understand right so 
Uh, so in many ways, to your answer, that the emotional, not the technical part, the, but the artistic part, the artistic answer is that in many ways, I like to cr I create the paintings that I would like to maybe even see myself in. Mm. I, you know, not only have I seen myself in, but maybe I would like to see myself in or, or what have you. So in many ways, we're creating the, our own reality. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, all right, I like that a lot. Um, and it reminds me, you know what it, re it reminds me of a feeling that I have myself, which is the following, especially when you said the voyeur part. It reminds me of, um, it just, I am very curious about people's, is, like the inside of people's is houses, uh, their apartment, wherever, where they live. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm not like a peeping Tom or anything, but whenever, whenever I walk by, you know, if I'm walking down the street or whatever, and there's like a window that's open, I'm like, oh my God, look, that's a bookcase. Uh, yeah. <laughs> something like that. And it's like, I'm just very curious about how different people basically how they are when not not just w what they're like when they're alone but also what their place is like when there's no one there because it's full of kind of like just evidence of you know their choices it's because they chose to put a bookcase there they chose to put this little adornment there and they chose to paint it this way and they chose the place itself you know like they liked yeah. the layout or something so um and, you know, particularly if I happen to walk out when it's when it's already dark and the lights are on, it's like, oh, my God, the lights are on. <laughs> uh, and I'm just amused. <laughs> well, by... <laughs> it's life, right? It's yeah, like yeah. Life, uh, uh, mean life. There's a lot. There's life in there. Right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, and, um, yeah. You know, those are all just ex extensions of who we are. Yes. In many ways, right? The, yeah. Uh, the home we live in, the clothes you wear, you know, any whatever anything any anything like that is an extension and, and speaks a lot to who we are so I, I understand what you're saying I find that that's kind of fun yeah it is it, it really is <laughs> yeah no and like um, the the scenes but that, that specifically involve people it's like and because you know I saw I was looking at your Instagram and I mean there's this one painting I don't know how new or how old it is but it's a scene of like a, a New York deli and there's like a bunch yeah. of guys in a kitchen and yeah. you know People, people sometimes form a relationship just between two people, and it's an intimate relationship. It's a romantic relationship. But when there's people like that in a in a workplace, they also have to kind of form their relationship. And sometimes, um, the, you know, they have to kind of coordinate themselves, and because they have to work together, so they have to be together yeah. in that in, in that small room or whatever. And so, sure. kind of a relationship forms there as well, which is kind of also intimate and founded by trust in a way you know yeah um yeah. okay yeah go ahead sorry that painting that painting that you mentioned mm -hmm. so uh, it's interesting that your interpretation is that um that's part of it for me when i was at that deli it's actually a famous deli in new york when i was you probably know who, what it is if i mention it obviously um but it's um great pastrami by the way <laughs> um uh it is the reason I was drawn to it, to that scene, I took a bunch of photographs of the scene. Obviously, I'm not doing it there on uh, from life, obviously, but um, but I, you know, had my camera or had my phone and just took a bunch of photographs, and I was attracted to the energy, right? Again, um, the energy and the story of these men working so hard and these and, and and the design. You know, you talk about being drawn to color and so forth. Just the design, the energy. Um, it was really. Um, a lot of fun because it was I wasn't tied into um, the, the narrative being so tight it was more of just mm. uh, about having fun with with the design and the energy of the scene and and people react to it they, because when you look at it you say boy there's just so much going on here these people are interacting you could see these men walking behind one another trying to do their jobs and so forth and so yeah my whole impetus for that was to express the, the energy and the feel of that moment. Mm. Okay, okay. Yes, that's that's pretty cool. Because, uh, yeah, okay. All right, we must move on. Uh, Mr. LaRusso, what is what is art in your opinion? Boy, that's the uh, that's the big question, right? That's the, um, uh, that's a, it's, a, I don't know. Like, Gabriella, <laughs> I mean, here, I, I will give you my interpretation. Yes. I, here, because again, you will have as you know, this is, this will be you've had ninety plus episodes, and 
and I'm sure everybody has their definitive answer as to what art is, right? I would be a fool to say this is exactly what it is and nothing else. So if I've been doing this almost 35 years and I've, what I realize, I've heard a great quote many years ago, and that is the more I know, the more I don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and that is to keep yourself open to learning and exploring and uh, opening yourself up to more of what the universe is showing you, what, what, not just art, because it's all interrelated, art and life and expression, what it is. Um, but again, getting back down to what, what the interview is calling for, I think to me, art is, as I stated before, a vehicle for us as humans, as a species to connect. If that's if I need to put it in a one sentence answer, that's what it is. Um, and it's imperative that we have it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have developed it as a species. I mean, mm. I hate to sound so scientific, but, um, you know, it's not. We, I don't know. Do we do we it's not do we need it? Is it like a food? Is it um, the sunlight? Is it whatever? I don't know. People would argue that, you know, I've had people that are more technical or scientific based that don't see a reason for art in any way mm -hmm. um, b simply because they don't think we necessarily need it to function and then I have other obviously more creative people that say it's absolutely necessary because it's a means of expression and we are emotional people and an emotional species so for me it's about connection again I hate to use that term but it's always every interview I've given it's always seems to come down to it's about art is a vehicle for us to connect um, with one another. Um, that's why it's so subjective. It, it can be so wonderful and subjective in that sense, because can you imagine if it was so distinct and and um, narrow in its definition, boy, it should be, a, it would be really hard to connect with people if you can only connect using this one narrow path, an, an emotional path. That would really be awful, wouldn't it? So the fact that it's, we have so many ways to go about it. You know, we can we can connect with our senses. You know, we can um, re write a story. Uh, music obviously is huge. You know, um, I don't know about you, but I'm I love music. I'm a big music fan of all kinds, and and to me, it, it I almost connect sometimes to a to a piece of music almost more readily than I do with a painting or a piece of, of two sure, yeah. two dimensional, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and in many ways, um, you know, music, we all have those special songs that immediately trigger those emotions in us, you know. So, yeah, I think, again, long story short, long, short answer is, yeah, it's, it's just for us, art is a vehicle for us to connect. Mm -hmm. and, um, and thank goodness for that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to argue against the people who are like, yeah, art isn't necessary, whatever, because you know we've been ma we've been doing it for a really long time i mean yeah. we were not really that safe or or that uh food was not that secure because you know typically you know there's there's an argument about certain things that hum humanity does that once our basic needs like food and shelter you know safe general safety uh are secured so like that short-term stuff has to be secured in the present so that then you can kind of start thinking about other stuff that's right. why we've done lots of things but when we started to do art, meaning like you were saying, like in the caves and stuff, we were not that safe or that secure with food. We were still hunting sure. food for the, you know, like the next week, maybe at most, or the day sure. in some cases. And we so, were still, so, so we were still doing it. So clearly we had a need to do that. So yeah, yeah. we had a need to do that. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's exactly what I, what I meant. And I'm reading a book and I've been saying that I'm reading this book for, I don't know how many episodes now. Um... I've been reading Dennis Dutton's The Art Instinct, and I finally got to the part where he actually talks about, uh, where he actually, not even necessarily, he starts talking about art as an adaptation, um, and part of sexual selection, which apparently is different from natural selection, because natural selection is like the random whatever mutation stuff, and sexual selection is kind of more deliberate, in, mm. and... and and it's more complicated in the sense that it involves things like uh, the peacock's ridiculous tail, which is actually mm -hmm. a hindrance to the animal. So, like that kind of com thing. Yeah, right. It, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's freaking yeah. awesome. So then, so yeah. then, so then, apparently, the fact that in the case of the peacock, 
just to like something to talk about something that is a relatively more simple because a healthy peacock can handle that ridiculous tail that means he is fit because he can handle mm -hmm. that additional mm -hmm. difficulty so then mm -hmm. that makes him really appealing more appealing yeah. to the females sure. so then yeah. that's like what <laughs> So then, you know, you thought you were getting scientific and stuff, and then it turns out, I mean, I mean, I haven't finished the book because it's, it's just, I have to read it slowly because it has so much shit that's just like, what? Um, yeah. Like that, you know? And so it's taking me a while, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I'm all for the idea of, of art being like an evolutionary adaptation for survival, for reproduction, you know, sexual selection. I love it. It's awesome. I like it yeah, a lot. I think it's... <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. I, and I think the people that say it's not necessarily just don't really understand, um, not to sound pretentious, but they, they just don't understand how pervasive it is. Yeah. Take you know, it for they, granted. I think, I think sometimes when they, when they say that, I think their definition is uh, art in the modern sense. Because really, if you think about it, art as we know it has really kind of been proliferated in the last you know, 200 years, that kind of thing. I mean, for before that, you know, it's gone through phases, right? Before that, it was art was created mostly for religious and, and the church and so forth. And then it went through different phases throughout humanity. But it, uh, but um, in its current in its current form, it's really only been a, around what 150 years, maybe mm -hmm. to almost 200. And that's being generous. So I think they said they look at it that way, because oftentimes I think in my point of view, the current sense of art is seen as something to be put on a pedestal in many ways. And unfortunately, right, um, it's seen to be this abstract, uh, esoteric um, idea of something that not everybody is privileged to understand right. or privileged to, right? You, you understand where I'm headed yeah. with that? And I disagree. I don't think that's its function. I think its function is more, more um, instinctual, more remedial. And yeah. I think it's, 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 it should speak to everybody. Yeah. And it's meant for everybody. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and so uh, to get back to your point, I think to the people that say that they don't agree or understand its function or don't think it has a, 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 a purpose, I think they're looking at that definition of art, yes. not everything else for the last you know five thousand years before that right yeah 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 for sure yeah i actually um and and really the last hundred like what you were saying because i think it's um the whole thing kind of more or less really started like after the first world war because everybody you know the first world war and the second world war wars they were super fucked up right and it makes sense that the reaction would be like what does anything mean you know right, um right um so, so but, can I get on, can I get onto that real quick? Can yeah, I do it. Mention something about that. I didn't want to interrupt because you just brought up a great, a great, um, and and we're getting way off into the weeds here. And I, I didn't know if you. It's were all connected, like you were this. saying. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. know. But so so to that, you're right. Uh, so basically, um, around the turn of the century, thinking started to change, and and yeah. you know, art went from what it was to then you know modern art, right? And then that became its own. A definition of what it is and that happened like you said at that time during the turn of the century when postmodern thinking started to to kind of germinate a little bit it didn't really take hold until really a lot of these french literary um philosophers people like foucault and derrida and people like that if you could look into those guys but basically to, to your to your listeners but basically um postmodern thought is that there is no definition of anything right right there, nothing is we only define things a cat is a cat because we say it's a cat there really is no definition to anything right um and i and i and i think that that then can become a slippery slope and to me in many ways it can i don't know that it's dangerous but i think it it um if we, if we get into that then it, it opens up doors that maybe we weren't willing or able or shouldn't open i don't i don't know i i, I to me that's not so, willing so to deal I'm with the consequences of opening into. the doors exactly yeah. exactly yeah. if we lose definition of everything wow you know then yeah, what? Yeah. you know then what so anyway getting yeah. off on a tangent there yeah no no i mean i like well i mean the the i, I don't know if it's necessarily a tangent because i mean the reason i brought it up brought it up to begin with 
is that that's basically why I started the podcast because I am tired. Uh, I've had enough of the trite platitudes of, oh, art can be anything or beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's like, I'm over that. The reason I'm over it is because those are limited things. It's like the explanation is like circular. It's like, no, art can be anything because art is subject or relative or whatever. Same thing with, with beauty. It depends on who is looking as who is looking at what. And it's like, that doesn't work for me because that is the end of that point. And it's like, right. it doesn't make sense to me that those things that have been around for so long, they clearly they're important and clearly they're something. So then it's like, yeah. The, so then so then I have discarded those things. I'm done with them. It's like I broke up with them. I'm done. <laughs> and so like so like it's so like what I, what I said in the intro, it's like long term research and trying to, you know, find answers to at least find what they mean to me, at least if, you know, yeah. if. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. So, you know, for me, and I totally agree with you, but as I, I don't try to impose that on anybody. Though. Oh, that no, no, is, no, no, that's no. How I, right. Yeah. So that's how I approach it for me right? yeah that yeah. works for me and and, and, and that's great uh, but i would never again say you're wrong i'm right you know whatever yeah totally i mean if uh, you know and, and like again like you know similarly to you i'm speaking for myself as well if i get my my ideas or definitions on the subject like solid enough i'm totally gonna be like no that's not art it's like i'm already <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like i'm already kind of being like no that's not art it's like i'm already starting yeah. to kind of filter it a little bit because there's things that i simply do not it's like so okay so so tell me what you think about this i think one of the reasons for which uh everyone wants to be calling everything art and you know if somebody has like the smallest impetus to create something there even if it's just a joke the reason for which they want to call it art is because we know that art is important and so they're like, oh, this is important. This thing that I made, even if it's stupid, I made it. So it's important. So it must be art. So like, it's just that I think that we are trying to ascribe, there's uh, ascribe the importance of art to something that is in another category. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that uh, it isn't important. It's just another category. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to be art. Uh, that's a good way to put it. You know, I think you're onto something, but also I was gonna uh, add that a lot of times if we look throughout history, maybe the definition of art ebbs and flows mm. in, in different ways due to cultural, political, religious sure, yeah. influences of the time, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, think about where we are culturally, politically, et cetera, today as to where we were 100 years ago. Mm. And so I think what is seen as art today, some of the things that are seen as art today that we're speaking about would never fly 100 years ago. Right. They fly today because culturally, spiritually, politically, etc., we are completely, you know, there, it's a dichotomy. We're in completely different places. So I think that's also another part of it. I think it's a culture where we are culturally, etc., I think has a lot to do with what's acceptable. Um, not just, you know, I mean, look at music as anything, dance, literature, mm. whatever, I think. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. OK. Um, all right. I want to ask you something else, but just give me a second to remember. Um, I'm not boring you, am I? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not one little bit. Um, ah, about about the privilege thing of understanding what art, uh, just art in general, and appreciating it. And uh, tell me also what you think about this. I have the, hypo the hypothesis that that is also the fault of the postmodernists. Okay, and the reason mm. is the following. Because they're like, art is anything and it's relative or whatever. When they make, when a person who agrees, you know, who, who's, uh, who's underpinning for making work is that. They make something that's trash, okay? Uh, they make something that's, all right, uh, what example have I given before? If somebody takes a brick and puts it on a pedestal and they're like, this is art. And it's in MoMA, because of course it would be in MoMA. It's in MoMA. Um, and then another person, uh, you know, like you said, a lay person, quote unquote, looks at it and it's like, I don't get it. Right. The person who made the trash is like, you're dumb, you don't get art. And right. so like, the problem there is that the person who is trying to communicate, like you were saying, to to use the ma the thing they made as a conduit for their what they're trying to say, their feelings, is communicating poorly. Yeah. Then that's why the other person doesn't get it. So that so the problem there is that they're not being good communicators. Not that the person doesn't get it. So then it's a problem of a person proposing something in a flawed way. 
And then of course somebody, the other person isn't, the receptor isn't going to get it, you know? Yeah. So what do you think about that? Well, you know, so the argument is also has been that when you look at postmodern work, you look at abstract expressionism and so mm -hmm. forth, you look at, you, you know, look, let me, let me say before that, I, I enjoy some, some postmodern art. Sure. Yeah, me too. Sure. You know, I've got some abstract movies I collect. I've got a couple of abstract pieces that I enjoy. Some friends, I have friends who are abstract painters. Um, so yeah, if it speaks to me emotionally and I like it, I, I like it. You know, yeah. I'm not going to judge somebody for, you know, whatever, you know, for the shoes they wear or the, or the hat, whatever. Um, but having said that though, I think when you look at postmodern work, um, a lot of it is the argument has been made in the past. Well, it's like, well, if I need to, if this is what it's about, why can't you just write it down on paper? Yeah. That's why you need right, that little right. plaque. Why, why do you have work. to make? Right. Why do you have to make a painting of it? Why, if it's, it's if it's all about the idea, then just write out the damn idea. Right. You know, and put that in a frame, and there's the paint. There's the piece of art. Yeah. And I think that's been done, obviously. Sure. So, um, but to me, postmodern theory is is it's 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 scary in a sense because it's as I said it before, it's a slippery slope, and if we do that, then it it if it jumps from art to politics to ethics to morality etc we're in big big trouble right so at some point you need um some guardrails here and there to kind of at least look i think i think i love some contemporary art and post-contemporary art and, and so forth but i'm drawn to realism mm. and there's a reason why i'm drawn to realism and i think I've been hearing more of this, and, and it, I, I'd like to think it's true, but I think realism is, not that it's ever gone away, but I think it's beginning to resurge a bit yeah. more because um, people have finally, after the last 50 years, have figured out, you know, I don't get it. I don't get it, and I want and I want to get it. Yeah, yeah. I want to get it, Yeah. And but I get that over there. I get that wonderful landscape. That really moves me, and I love that, you know? Look, Gabriella. When you look, when you go out and you look up at the sky or you are, in a, are out in nature and you see an amazing uh, sunset and it makes you feel a certain way, mm -hmm. it just tears your soul out and it makes you feel this emotional, it's, you know, you feel this emotional feeling looking at that sunset. How's that any different than going to the Met and looking at your favorite whatever? Mm -hmm. Right. To me, there is no connection. Yeah. It's all an emotional trigger. Right. And I think that's what people yearn for when they look at art. I think you lose them because they're, they've been told for the last 50 years that this abstract idea or something that you'll never get, buddy, that's what art is. People are finally saying, I'm done. I'm done yeah. with that. I'm tired of it. Not only not only the lay person, but even the more astute collectors and uh, gallerists and so forth are finally starting to say, I'm done. You know, this has had its course. Things are starting to shift. Things are moving again. And you're, you're seeing a little realism gaining a bit more appreciation again. And yeah, that makes me happy. anyway. Makes me happy, too. Yeah, because I'm tired of that and other stuff. <laughs> uh, OK. All right. Um, all right. So, Mr. LaRusso, what is beauty in your opinion? So again, it's all subjective, right? But mm -hmm. to me, beauty is, um, it's something that, you know, I, I, I've always had a hard time trying to define the word sublime, but it's something mm -hmm. that you um, deep down at the very base can't, can't define. It's undefinable. And I hate to use that as a cop out, but it is, it's undefinable. It's not like, it's not quantifiable. It's not something that you could say, well, it's a bowl of fruit. Well, why is that bowl of fruit beautiful? Or, it, well, you know, it's the uh, the laugh, my, my child's laugh. Well, why is that beautiful? I mean, so you can, you know, it's again, it's something that is undefinable and it speaks to us it, really in a remedial, basic, basic sense. It, whether it's it's touching uh, the spiritual side of us, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the most religious person, but I do subscribe to a Jungian kind of a, a, a theory mm. that there's a collective unconscious in mm. many ways, you know, and whether you want to call that, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to label that. But, you know, Jung had this, this idea of 
we're all connected in some way and there's an undercurrent that kind of connects us right Mm. and i think in a way that's when we look at something that's we define as that's beautiful we say that's beautiful well it's really something that's speaking to us in that very deep spiritual sense that we can't we really can't define and again i i hate to sound like a cop-out when i say that gabrielle but it's (laughs) You know, I, I can say, yeah, I think my, my wife is beautiful and I think that my that painting is beautiful and I think, you know, and I can give you reasons why I think it's beautiful specifically for, you know, to that specific thing. But what is beauty with a capital B is, is, is defined, that that is something that I think is very, very hard uh, to quantify. Mm. Can I leave it there? Uh, <laughs> can I, can sure. I leave? Can I leave the definition of beauty there? Because I just think I'll just be chasing my tail if I try to, to, you know, get into that more. So no, yeah, sure, no problem. But I have questions, uh, yeah. Mr. Larusso, because, um, so, uh, because okay, I of course I agree with you that basically you know I mean it when it when when one is experiencing beauty you know that you're experiencing beauty, right? Right. Um, so, other, so, so, I mean, for the case for me is that I can describe something about the feeling kind of vaguely, you know, because I, I can kind of describe what's happening in that moment. Um, meaning that, like, you know, I have, it's like I have to stop what I'm doing and kind of invest time with that which is, inspi- which is uh, summoning, like, kind of like this experience within, you know. So let me um, ask you this. So when you do that, though, is it a is it a is it cerebral? Is it emotional? How well, both? I mean, how do you go through that process? Um, I mean, it's both because uh, I think that it's both because I would say that it's cere- cerebral because I am choosing to stop in the moment to spend the time with whatever's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, because and this reminds me of a really corny saying the one about stopping to smell the roses. Yeah, because <laughs> I think that's part of kind of like the willingness to experience to have the experience because it's like you know uh there's lots of rose bushes here when the roses bloom or whatever and i you know i typically will stop and look at them and see how pretty they are and the color is like so special and sometimes i even do smell them and it's like wow this is what a rose smells like you know and so like the choice to stop and do that Cause it's like, I mean, you, you know, if I'm doing that, if I'm on the way to the store or something, I have to put off going to the store to do the hanging out with the rows. So it's going to take time. It's going to make the going to the store later and whatever it is, you know? Sure. Um, so then that is a, a conscious decision in the moment. But then the other part is kind of like that contemplation, that enjoyment, I think is the emotional enjoyment. Like, I think that part is emotional. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe, um, I don't know if that sounds right to you. What do you think about do that? You is ever, that? So I'm curious. As we're speaking, I'm, sure. I'm thinking about my experience when I when I experience something that I consider beautiful. Do you ever have a situation where, and this happens to me a lot, where you're you find yourself in a moment, and time almost stands still, yeah, or time almost uh, it go. It's like slow motion, and right and in that time that it stands still you're transported to somewhere else i hate to sound so ho- i want to, you know i don't <laughs> i don't mean to make it sound so hokey but but you know what i mean yeah. it, it's uh, on an emotional level time pauses and you recognize this i'm tapping into something else here for for a split second or however long usually for me it doesn't it doesn't last long but it does there's this passage of something that's happening and I don't know what it, I don't know what it is necessarily. Yes. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, it definitely does make sense. Um, it it definitely does make sense. It does feel that way. It feels it it feels it. De- I think it feels a little bit like in while I'm investing that time, there kind of is no time in the sense that right. you know I chose to stop, so <laughs> kind of everything stops, even though I'm going to be late to the store, you know, something like that. Right. Um, right. But 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 I guess the part that I'm that I'm not sure feels as you described it. Um, 
I don't feel like I'm elsewhere. I feel like I'm very, I'm like I'm more there than I would be yeah, otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's, yeah. Uh, I, that's not what I meant, that you're elsewhere. It's, it's you're, you're almost more, reality is almost super reality. Yes. It's almost more. Yes. Right, exactly. Yes. Yes, yes, yes because, um, and I guess that's one of the things that I like about hanging out with, you know, the roses or whatever, whatever it is that I'm staring at that has my attention at the moment. Yeah. Is that nature made stuff and, and that includes everything of course. It includes, you know, other humans, it involves plants, animals, and just landscape in general. Is that it they're infinite in the sense that yeah. you can keep looking at them basically indefinitely and you're always gonna yes. find other stuff there. Yeah. And yeah. and okay, so okay, so I think okay, so I think that's the experience of beauty, but then and I think I also think that might might just be kinda like the connection with because you mentioned the sublime as well which you know it doesn't strictly have to be a divine god or whatever you want mm -hmm. but i under i i understand why somebody would interpret it that way like in a divine sort of like oh my god sure. i want to like worship sure. this you know sure sure um just because it's kind of amazing you know um i i also think that we definitely you know humans in general or you know modern world western whatever you want to call it or, or, you know, in cities, whatever you want, all the technology, we tend to take certain things for granted, like that kind of nature made stuff and the fact that we came from that and that it's kind of amazing. And what do you think about that? I think I, I, I agree with what you're saying. And the thing that came to mind is that I read something a while back that to your point, you know, when when you're seeing those roses and you you are tapping into that super reality, the it's been argued that that's that's the way we really are supposed that is real that is reality mm -hmm. does that make sense in other words yeah, yeah. in other words what we go through in daily life is really almost kind of distra a distraction mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and when we have those moments of clarity we call them moments of clarity but the irony is that that's really how things are mm -hmm. or should be and and you know it doesn't have to be a religious experience uh, I, I you know you can call it a spiritual experience or, sure. or whatever it's not you know uh old white man in a long beard floating above the sky is religious <clears throat> but it can be tapping into whatever you want to define as something bigger than ourselves you know yes yes yeah. okay all right well i like that a lot as kind of starting to close it out um, Mr. LaRusso, because we have broken the 50 minute mark of our conversation, um, what, so I'm going to start to close it out. What are you up to lately? Do you have a show coming up? Are you teaching anything? Is there anything you're excited about? Do you want to add anything? Sure. Sure. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. So several things. So, um, about a month ago, two months ago, I, I, uh, I launched my online, um, course that because um, I've always you know I teach about one workshop one or two workshops a year I don't I don't really have time to do many so um, I had um, request to, to possibly do something like an online course of some kind so I have that and if anyone's interested they can go to my website or my Instagram and there's a, a link to uh, larussocourses.com and it's it's an it's a, just a, how I go about again it's how I go about it's not gospel it's how I go about yeah. Creating, creating a painting and it, I go into all kinds of things it's from from my philosophy and influences to my color theory etc cetera, etc cetera, technical stuff and non-technical etc so that's kind of fun the other thing is um, I will be doing an, uh, my annual on uh, I'm sorry my annual in-person mm -hmm. class my one-week workshop in this at the Scottsdale Artist School down in Scottsdale Arizona I've been doing that for gosh 20 some years now and it's all it's a lot of fun uh, space is limited on that so if you're interested you probably want to give them a call and last thing is um, besides getting work to my galleries I do have an artist focus at McClary Fine Art in Santa Fe New Mexico this June end of June uh, this summer is that like so, a QA? and a where you're like you're gonna be there is that what that is um, it's yeah I, it's basically for lack of a better term it's not a full show it's basically a small show I'll be sending down there for that so um, so all new work, um, and if anybody's more interested in dates and all that stuff, you can, can I plug my website? You can yeah, my plug website. whatever you want. 
uh, Joseph LaRusso Fine Art dot com okay. and it's all there or my instagram is larusso arts is my instagram okay you said it's joseph larusso fine art is your website yeah not plural fine art yeah dot com yeah yeah because i think where did i go just before we talked i think on the links on your instagram okay i'm not sure if i saw this one so i want to write yeah, it down link, so that i can the put link it on, on the instagram is for the course yeah so that that'll take you to mastering your artist's work with joseph so yeah okay okay all right well uh thank you joseph very much uh so for gabrielle real me quick today. when, when yes. before we got on you said that usually when you talk to your art artists you tend to not talk about art Remember that earlier, not in the, not during our interview, but before we got on, you said that you, when you talk to your artist friends, you tend to talk about other things. Oh, about yeah. Art, mm -hmm. Really? I don't. When I talk to my artist friends, we just, I love talking <laughs> about all kinds of, you know, yeah, I get yeah. under, peel, the, peel that onion. It's, it's so much fun. So yes, thank you yes. for that, uh, oh. that opportunity. Yeah, no, for sure. No, I've been trying. I've been trying to do that deliberately as well. Like, uh, let's not talk about our opinions on whatever the hell it is. Let's just talk about like, like all right so i guess uh, a little a little wedgy addendum here um um uh, all right just give me a second roger scruton is a guy that talked about uh because unfortunately he died he he talks a lot about beauty and art and beautiful architecture and this type of stuff so he talks about how much better older type more traditional whatever you want to call it architecture is uh and i'm inclined to agree with him but I don't know, you know, like that's one of the things that I've been that, that I've been thinking about that I will ask the art people. Like, do you if if you know if, if is it possible to like remove the bias of having grown up in something? You know, because I'm I'm sure there must be something about that. If, because if he grew up in like a smaller yeah. sort of London city, you know, then he's you know then it's yeah. difficult to kind of bypass that. I think it's hard. Yeah, yeah. I think I think if you do that, it it's, it takes a very very, uh, it takes a lot of mental energy and intention yeah. to do that because I I think it's difficult to do just yeah. because you're so programmed as that's your default in many ways, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I definitely agree, but at the same time, it's like um, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it's impossible because sure. be, because. Um, you know, I mean, I didn't grow up in, I didn't grow up in, in New York City. I mean, I grew up in Panama and like just whatever Panama looks like. Yeah. So I'm not that familiar with the architecture here other than in pictures and stuff. But then like the smaller, because I mean, I've been in Salma Gundy Club, for example. Yeah. And I love the hell out of that, the, the place, you know, the way the stairs creak and just yeah. like the stuff, the way, I don't know, the way, like the dining room. I don't know. I love that place. It's amazing. Really? Sure. And so sure. like the, I mean, I, um, so, I mean, I'm, so what reason do I have to think that is way better than those bullshit ass restored uh, new places that have like shitty as hell facades that I hate, you know, like yeah. the ones that are just like gray and flat and have like square yeah. windows and have no awnings or anything. They're so ugly and stupid. I hate them, sure. you know? Sure. So it's like, yeah. uh, you know, I have no uh, kind of sentimental nostalgic bias for either one. Um, so, so, you know, I mean, I think it, it's like the same with art. It's like, I, um, I, I'm not sure why yet, but I'm pretty sure that it is, a, that it's definitely possible to discern good art from bad art and stuff that is not art, you know, um, but I'm working on that. I'm working on it too. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on it too. So. Okay. 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 All right. So maybe this will be the real closing. <laughs> okay. So, well, thank you again, uh, Joseph for joining me and indulging in all of my questions and musing and you know also you indulging in musing yourself and thinking about and talking about stuff uh thank you everyone for joining us feel free to let joseph and i know what you think of this conversation in the comments and leave any additional questions i encourage everyone listening and watching to like this video and share it with anyone you consider relevant as it is immensely helpful to my channel and so is your subscription if you want to support joseph myself and the podcast you can find links in the show notes Thank you very much and see you next time, everyone. Thank you. Bye.